My name is Andrei Pietrzykowski. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Animal Sciences and also an adjunct uh, assistant professor at the Department of Genetics. We study in our lab the molecular mechanisms of um, addiction, particularly addiction to alcohol, alcoholism. And we informally call our lab the um, LARA lab, which stands for uh, Laboratory of uh, Adaptation, Reward and Addiction. I think research on alcoholism is important for two reasons. One is that alcoholism is a very common disease. On the other hand, I also think that uh, studying alcoholism or addiction in general, it really gives you a very good window into understanding how human brain works. And we can apply that knowledge not only to addiction, but many other diseases. For a long time, we thought that the proteins are the main driving force of life. The recent research, especially after the human genome was uh, sequenced about 10 years ago, indicated that only 1% of human genome are dedicated to the protein coding genes. And now uh, what appears is that there, is, there are many different elements within this junk DNA. I focus on one particular type of this new type of uh, genes, uh, which are non-protein coding genes but they encode molecules of a very important and key function in almost every possible imaginable biological process. They are called uh, microRNAs. MicroRNAs are uh, small RNA molecules. They are uh, transcribed for, from their own genes. They are not transcribed or translated later on into proteins. The final form is RNA. So imagine that you have DNA, double-stranded. Somewhere in that you have a gene and that will be the protein coding gene. From that, the mRNA is uh, made somewhere uh, in the other part of the genome. Uh, you have another piece of DNA which now encodes something else. You will make a short microRNA, and that microRNA um, has the uh, sequence um, complementary to the UTR region of mRNA. That process of uh, suppressing certain targets is taking place and through that the cellular physiology can change and through that the behavior. One microRNA can regulate a lot of different mRNAs by binding to them and repressing protein production out of them. So if you will change the level of uh, a single microRNA in a cell, you can have a very strong effect of that cell physiology. We are really, really interested in the microRNA and how alcohol affects microRNA expression. The acute exposure to alcohol triggers almost immediate changes in the expression of uh, one particular microRNA in brain regions which are particularly important in the development of addiction. We also will look at uh, whether the alcohol can regulate microRNA genes themselves. Chronic alcohol exposure can actually put here the epigenetic marks, which will can then downregulate expression of microRNA through that gene. And we see that interesting paradox. Acute alcohol upregulates microRNA expression, but the chronic alcohol downregulates that on a different level of regulation. In either case, all that when will be transcribed, uh, translated, uh, or imposed onto the different microRNA targets that will change the gene expression in the particular cell. In our case, we are mostly interested in neurons. What is really powerful about the microRNAs that each of them, only one, with that one microRNA, can target several different mRNAs encoding different proteins. So if you will change level of only a single microRNA, you're going to get that uh, increase or the pretty intense, pretty severe effect of many different targets. And because of that, sometimes microRNAs are called super regulators or master regulators of gene expression. People who are predisposed to alcoholism have some specific mutations related to microRNA. We have uh, found very interesting uh, data which indicates that indeed uh, one particular microRNA, which we uh, mainly focus on, has some uh, uh, genetic predisposition to alcoholism. What we discovered is that um, people who are abusing alcohol, uh, they have uh, a, a set of specific SNPs, which are single nucleotide polymorphisms. And these SNPs are related to microRNA. 
and they potentially change expression of this microRNA and make people more prone to development of alcoholism. And we try to see if we can use microRNAs as uh, biomarkers of alcoholism. If you have predisposition, you probably will need to drink less alcohol to get the same downregulation of microRNA. Altogether, we are trying to address the relationship between microRNA and alcohol on these three different angles. And I think through that we are getting this more holistic view how alcohol can regulate gene expression and how that it can predispose to alcoholism. There is a lot of people who contribute to that. They are uh, undergraduate students um, at Rutgers, uh, as well as the graduate students. Um, also, um, in my laboratory, I have currently a postdoc and a lab manager. What is really important in science is that this, uh, this collaborative uh, effort. Ultimately, I would like to uh, put all my research together uh, to create new diagnostic tools, as well as create uh, novel uh, therapeutic uh, strategies for patients who are suffering from uh, alcoholism and they need that uh, so desperately.